Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Epic Future Space. It took me a while to prepare this video, but I finally wanted to talk about SpaceX's Dragonfly program, especially in light of recent events. What is the Dragonfly program? It's SpaceX's test bed to have reusable powered landing capable Dragon capsules that would land under rocket power instead of just parachutes. This is going to be a two year test program that will go through five phases of development. The Dragonfly test vehicle actually arrived at the McGregor, Texas test facility back in October of 2015, but we've already seen this particular vehicle before. It's the same capsule that was used for SpaceX's pad abort test back in May of 2015. This vehicle is even using the same eight Super Draco thrusters that were used for the pad abort to power the vehicle during the different test flights it will undergo, similar to the flights of their Grasshopper and Falcon 9 Dev 1 vehicle, but also very different. Sporting four steel landing legs, the initial tests will shake out the Super Draco thrusters and prepare the vehicle for an ambitious test regimen. For the first phase, initially the Dragonfly will undergo short hover flights or even hop tests while tethered to a crane, similar to NASA's Morpheus lander or even Mastin Space Systems tests of reusable landers. I like to call them smart landers. But not only is this due to how SpaceX wants to initially start and proceed through their test program, but it also has to do with their their current permit from the FAA, which essentially says that they may not operate the vehicle, the Dragonfly vehicle, at an altitude that exceeds 80 feet above ground level, as per their application. The next phase, or second phase of testing, would remove the crane and introduce a helicopter, which would essentially drop the Dragonfly vehicle, and the Dragonfly would use not only the Super Draco thrusters, but also three parachutes to safely land. And they're calling this the propulsive assist land test. This would be followed up by a fully propulsive landing test, and it would also be dropped by the helicopter, but it would only use the Super Draco thrusters and fire for about five seconds to safely land. The fourth phase would be what they're calling the propulsive assist hop test, and this would have the Dragonfly vehicle launch itself with the, just the Super Draco thrusters firing for about 12.5 seconds. And after it you know, reached its, its final height and was coming down, it would fire the Super Draco thrusters again. However, it would be assisted by two parachutes to safely land. Finally, the last phase of development would be called the fully propulsive hop test, and it's really similar to the grasshopper flights. In the case that the dragonfly would fire its engines to ascend to a height of about 7,000 feet above ground level, travel over its arc and throttle down its engines, and on its way down, fire its engines again to make a nice soft propulsive landing back down at the launch site. And once they complete that phase of the testing, they might be ready to introduce the dragon capsule as a fully reusable capsule that would land under rocket power at one of the landing zones, so I'm really excited for that phase. Something that's interesting about this program is that while they're going through these different phases of testing, there will be Super Dracos on every single Dragon V2 or Crude Dragon. And what I'm wondering is whether or not, even if they're not completely through with the different phases of development, if they will try to test the Super Dracos on a descent trajectory and have kind of assisted landings with parachutes and the Super Dracos before they're even finished with the test program. However, there probably would be a lot of risk with that and NASA probably wouldn't even allow them to do that, but it's still something to consider anyway. Another thing that I find really interesting and admirable about SpaceX is they're already reusing hardware to progress through their reusability program. For example, the Falcon 9R Dev 1 vehicle was built from the core stage that was used for the qualification testing of the Falcon 9 version 1.1, in addition to the Dragonfly vehicle itself already being first used on the pad abort test. Speaking of the Falcon 9R Dev 1 vehicle, on its fifth and final flight in August of 2014, it suffered an anomaly and the vehicle was destroyed. SpaceX planned to build a Dev 2 vehicle, but the plan changed, especially after they started testing landing of the first stage of the Falcon 9 on operational flights. However, a partial Dev 2 vehicle may have been built and then converted into the booster that will be used for SpaceX's in-flight abort test of the Dragon capsule to fulfill requirements for NASA's commercial crew program. 
The reason for this speculation is that the booster stage for the in-flight abort test, which by the way went through a tanking test at Vandenberg Air Force Base back in April of 2015, only has three Merlin engines just like the DEV-1 vehicle. Although it does not have any landing legs, at least not during this tanking test, I wonder if SpaceX will equip it with some landing legs and attempt to recover this booster as well if they have any future plans for it. I also wonder if the Dragonfly capsule is the one that is going to be used for this in-flight abort test, which would be really cool if they used the same vehicle for both abort tests for the commercial crew program. That would, that would just be awesome. Something else that might still be in the works is that the DEV-2 vehicle, if it was built, was going to be flight tested at Spaceport America in New Mexico. And since the plan for that changed, they did say to Spaceport America that they will still use the facilities, this time for boosters that have been recovered from successful landings to re-qualify the vehicles for future flight. However, uh, the information that I've been getting is that SpaceX would attempt a static fire test of the recovered booster that was launched on December 20 first at Cape Canaveral and if they do intend to test that stage at Spaceport America will they do grasshopper like flight tests where it'll ascend and come back down and land again or are they going to just do static fire tests I'm not sure all I know is that that was a plan which was to test their vehicles at Spaceport America they still might do that in the future I have no information of knowing whether or not that deal is off or if that's still something in the works but if they do that would be pretty cool to see since SpaceX had the successful return to flight and successfully recovered the booster, their reusability program can continue. And I'm wondering how much progress they're going to make in just one year from now. Are they going to have the in-flight abort test this year? Are they going to get through a lot of those five different phases of testing of the Dragonfly? I don't know, and I have no information as to when the first tentative test of the Dragonfly will be. All I know is that they will at least try to start the program this year, but I'm pretty confident they will once the kind of first backlog of launches that they have for the first part of this year that once they're able to get through those and hopefully everything goes fine with all of those launches but in any case that is SpaceX's plan to begin reusing their Dragon capsule in the same way that they successfully landed the Falcon 9 first stage so spaceflight is definitely changing and I think for the better don't forget to like this video and subscribe to me if you haven't already. And please let me know what you think about this program, or at least this idea, in the comments section below. I would love to know what you guys think. I have lots of suggestions for what to talk about next, and you guys have given me a lot of really good suggestions already. But I am taking even more suggestions, so I want to know what you guys want to hear about next. And uh, if I don't have any particular things uh, from, from you guys that I want to do, I have lots of stuff already planned uh, for what to talk about. So, ah, I'm very excited to be making videos on this channel again and hopefully I can continue to make a whole lot more so until the next time I see you guys at Astra to the stars